Uh, joining us today, we have with us Pam Moore, aka Pam Marketing Nut, who is the CEO and co-founder of Marketing Nuts, uh, which is an agile social media and digital marketing training and consultancy company that specializes in personal branding, con uh, conversion uh, optimization, or for that matter, helping business leaders not just to do social media or just be social, but also to be extremely relevant. In fact, she's also been ranked by Forbes as top five social media power influencer is an avid international uh, keynote speaker and also a best-selling author. And she's armed with a prolific experience of more than 20 years. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to understand how to future-proof your content marketing. So please put your hands together and welcome on stage our keynote speaker here. We have with us none other than Papa Moro. She's right here. Yeah. I love that surprise entry there. Hi, thank you so much. How's everybody doing? Good, made it here. So do any of you work on content about the India toilets? Anybody? I'm telling you, you could probably have a lot of views. So coming from the USA, before we talk about content, I think I have a lot to learn. I had water spraying in my face from all different places, trying to push levers to get toilets to flush. Somebody could create a YouTube channel for Americans coming to India, and I think you might get a lot of views. So point proven that things that you know by heart, that you do every day, there's people that don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so let's go ahead and dig right in. So who is ready for a journey over the next couple of years? There's got to be at least one person. I don't see any hands raised. OK? If you haven't noticed, things are getting ready, already getting very crazy and loud in the digital world. All right? So you have to be ready to work. How many of you have ever, raise your hand if you've ever seen the Game of Thrones? Okay, there's a part in this show, in the last season, I'm not gonna do any spoilers for those of you who haven't seen it, but where there's a, a gentleman and he is getting ready to get on a dragon, all right? And they have to get on this dragon in order to accomplish their mission. And he's scared to death, okay? And he's looking at her saying, I don't know how to ride a dragon. How did you learn how to ride a dragon? And she says, nobody knows how to ride a dragon until you ride a dragon, okay? That's a lot of what content marketing is about today. We don't know how to do everything that we need to do in the next 12 months to be successful. We need to build on what we know, but I'm telling you, we don't know everything. And so you have to be ready for the journey and the challenge to say, every morning, I'm going to get on that dragon. I'm going to go fight, and I'm going to achieve my biggest goals and dreams. So we've worked with clients in all different industries, from in B2B and B2C, large and small. I spent 15 years working corporate America. My heart is for the large business as well as the small business. I love helping people achieve their dreams. Can you tell me, raise your hand, if you work inside of a corporation today or a company? Just want to see who's in here. And raise your hand if you um, have started your own company. Maybe if you someday have a dream to do that. All right. So we walk the walk. Everything I'm teaching you, we've done with our clients. We've also accomplished ourselves. I spent 15 years working corporate America. I had no outside investment. I started my company with a little Twitter handle called Pam Marketing Nut. <laughs> After spending 15 years in corporate, I had many people telling me, Pam, you should just go start your own agency. You're already running that inside of corporate America. Uh, digital and social really is what helped us take off. We now have a very large audience, uh, scales up to up over 200 million across channels. We launched a podcast in 2014 as a test. And if you haven't tested audio, you really need to take a look at it if that's where your audience is hanging out. We've had over 1.7 million downloads with that test of a podcast to date one of our highest, highest converting platforms that we have. So traditional marketing methods as we know them are simply not working. So when's the last time we actually saw our kids staring at the TV wanting to buy something? Right? It happens, I know, once in a while, but for the most part, what are our kids doing? Where are they learning about what they want to buy? From their friends and from their phones, right? Their tablets, mom and dad's phones. They're sending us a screen capture. They're texting it to us. They're telling us what they need. So even the youngest 
of the generations today, it's changing, right? The toy manufacturers, the food companies, they can no longer reach even the youngest generation through their traditional mediums. Everything's changing. Then we have robots trying to be humans, and we have humans trying to be robots. Okay, so as you move into 2020, don't try to be the robot. Find a way to embrace artificial intelligence. Just like they said decades ago that computers were going to take everybody's jobs. Do you remember that? Okay, fear the computer. How did that work out? The jobs just changed, right? So we can't fear these technologies. We need to embrace them. And I, when it comes to artificial intelligence, I see a lot of marketers, they're in two different camps. They're either wasting a lot of time on something that really does, is not relevant to their business or their audience today, or else they're scared to death thinking, well, I don't know about artificial intelligence, so now I've fallen behind when it comes to content marketing. Right? It's not one and the same. You need to focus on where you can have the best success. Uh, we no longer control the channel or the message. So think about the last time that Facebook launched a new feature. Right? Think about when they launched Messenger, for example, the messaging app. Did we as business leaders have any control on our clients using that Messenger platform? No. The day that something gets launched in one of these new communication channels that the world is using, we have no control. It's not like the old days where we would say, hey, guess what? We're going to wait to launch that for 18 months because I have all these programs that I need to put together and I have this direct mail campaign I've already paid for and this email marketing program. No. Facebook calls the shots. WhatsApp calls the shots. Instagram calls the shots now. We have to be ready and agile because our customers will be telling us Facebook's Messenger is where I want to communicate with you. WhatsApp is where I want to communicate with you. We don't know what the next launch is going to be next month and next year, but we have to be ready to respond to that. And I know me as a marketer, I'm always known as Pam with a plan. I have to know what I'm doing and why and where I'm going and what my goals are. That is really something that I struggle with, is, is knowing that I'm not in control. Who else can relate to that? Anybody in here? Nobody? Okay, okay, one person. All right, so organic reach of social media is dwindling to zero. So organic reach is where your content reaches your target audience and you're not having to pay for that reach. You're not having to buy advertising, all right? That, that organic reach is dwindling unless you know what to do. 90% of the data in the world was created in the last two years. Think about that. That's a lot of data. Um, how much data did you contribute to the digital world today? Do you think it was very much? How many of you have been on your phone? Okay. How many of you have sent some emails? How many of you have sent some images? How many of you were on WhatsApp? Facebook. Right, so you've definitely been contributing. By 2020, every human being will generate 1.7 megabytes of data per second on average. That's a lot of data. Every minute, Facebook users send 31.25 million messages. That's a lot of content. Every minute, Facebook users watch 2.77 million videos. 300 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute. And yes, I was hungry when I did this picture last night. I updated some of my slides. I was craving pizza and I don't really even eat pizza, but I thought the image looked good. YouTube plays 1 billion hours of video every day. It's a lot of video. By 2020, internet business transactions will reach up to 450 billion per day. Okay, this is where it starts to get interesting as business leaders, right? So all this data, all these people, 6.1 billion smartphone users by 2020. So if you think you've missed the boat, if you think you're left behind, we're just getting started. Like you need to dream big right now. I don't care if you don't even understand what content marketing is or you 
don't know how to use these different social technologies and platforms. You have every opportunity to succeed just as much as anybody else sitting in this room and anybody else out there. Our current output of data is 2.5 quintillion bytes a day. I used to work at Storage Tech. Who even knows what Storage Tech is? It was sold off to Sun Microsystems, which was sold off to Oracle years ago. But we used to have a room size storage device that we could walk into. I used to manage the software that managed the robotic arms for all the cartridges. It had two terabytes in data and sold for close to a million dollars. Now, you can get three terabytes of data on one little card. Okay, so think of how far we've come. However, with all this data, the average attention span for humans is still only about eight seconds. We're inundated with content. And it's a good thing that our brains can process visuals 60,000 times faster than decoding text. So if you're not using visuals in your marketing, you better get started. 77% of brand conversations are on social are just people looking for help and looking for information. So if you're stuck with, what do I talk about? How am I going to contribute to the social and digital web? Keep it simple. Answer the questions that you know your customers will have. 74% of consumers identify word of mouth as a key influencer in their buying decisions. How many of you have ever purchased something based on what one of your friends or colleagues told you? Right? It's one of our most trusted resources. Facebook Messenger, which I mentioned earlier, 5 point billion emojis are sent every day. Can you guess which emoji is the most popular one? Any guesses? What was that? Okay. So it is love. Okay. Most popular reaction on Facebook is love. So what does this tell us? That people like the conversations they're having in Messenger. Okay. So this is just an example why we can't ignore these mediums. People are happy at least right now for the most part. I think it's changed even over the last few months a little bit with some of the privacy things coming out. But people, for the most part, are happy with the conversations they're having in WhatsApp. They're happy with the conversations they're having in Messenger. So we're able to build relationships through conversation. On the web today, social currency, how you're going to achieve ROI is attention plus action. And you need both. You can't have just one. We first have to have the attention of our target audience. We need them to know who we are, what we're about. We want them to be, if we don't get that attention, we're never going to be able to earn their trust. But we also need to know how to inspire them to take an action, a real action. And you can't inspire them to take an action if you don't plan what that action is up front. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make when it comes to content marketing is they'll create a whole bunch of content and just throw it out there and then, you know, six months, a year later say, well, we spent all this money on content and it didn't achieve an ROI. But when you say, you ask the question, well, what metrics were you tracking? What success were you expecting? They have a really hard time answering that question because they never defined what it was supposed to be. So are you as relevant as a toaster and avocado? Okay, so your content, think about Instagram, and needs to fit somewhere between Beyonce's latest video and her latest plastic surgery endeavor. Uh, <laughs> needs to fit between the latest Bollywood movie or whatever you're into here, and it needs to fit somewhere in between what's happening in tech and the hipster. You have hipsters here in India? You call them hipsters? Okay, people that eat, uh, buy new toasters like this fancy red toaster, and they put uh, avocado on the toast. Do you do that here? Okay. There's a lot of those pictures on Instagram in America, okay? And you have them here too. So you need to figure out where you're going to fit. Where does your content fit? We have to figure out how we can be as relevant as the toaster and the avocado and the Bollywood movie and Beyonce and the latest tech. we got to fit in there somewhere. Relevancy is what is going to build trust. 
It's also what's going to help us earn attention. Because people don't just buy things, they join things. Think about when you first, your first Apple device. Do you remember the first Apple device you ever owned? What color were the headphones? What color were they? White? Did you wear them even when they were uncomfortable? Anybody? Yes? People wore them, why? Because you were part of a community. Everybody knew you had an Apple. You were no longer carrying around your CD player on your back pocket. People want to be part of something bigger than themselves. So when we're creating our content marketing plan and our strategy, we do not want to start with the people. We, we do not want to start with the technology. We must take an audience first approach to everything we're doing. And when you take an audience first approach to, to content marketing, that means your audience comes first in everything that you do. You do not define a goal until you've thought about your audience. So we leverage a methodology called the POST methodology. It's from Forrester Research. And there is a book called The Groundswell. I highly recommend it. Very simple read. And if your company is struggling to get a foundation and some architecture in place for your content, it's a great place to get people on board. But it's people. So who is the audience you're targeting? What are their objectives? What are the objectives that they have for themselves? And what are the objectives that you have for that audience? And then the S is the strategy. It's what is your relationship with that buyer, with that audience member? And is it a transactional relationship? Is it an intimate relationship? Where do you want that relationship to go? Those three things are going to drive your tactics and your technology. Too many people start with the technology. They're like, well, WhatsApp just launched something new. I'm going to start there. Or Facebook just launched something. Or I need a new website. Yes, you need probably all of those three things, if that's what you're, the best way you're going to communicate with your audience. But don't go put together your strategy till you have defined your audience and what they need from you and how you're going to help them and be as relevant as you possibly can. That's why we want to inspire, connect, and achieve. When we inspire our audiences to connect with us with the goal of helping them achieve their goals, we achieve our goals by default because they are one and the same. Communities create markets. And when I work with uh, companies of all sizes, executives, the first question I always get is, Pam, when am I going to see the money? Show me the money, honey. When am I going to get to the right side of this screen where there is an ROI? And this is the hardest thing for executives to understand and people that are new to these technologies is that it takes time. Right? That's the last thing they want to hear. But we have an opportunity to, to foster community, to build relationships. We're in an opportunity zone as we launch a new Facebook group, or we launch a new community, or blog, or podcast, or live video show. We have an opportunity over time to harvest those relationships in an authentic way, to, to earn trust and loyalty, and earn them becoming a, a small percentage of them becoming a paid customer and becoming, even if they're not buying from us, maybe a loyal evangelist that'll still tell all their friends about us. Content marketing is the heart of all marketing. It is, it is the foundation where we're able to connect with emotion. More than 50% of an experience that somebody has on anything is based on emotion. You've got to tap into the power of emotion. Content marketing combines the art and the science of communication without directly selling. And that is the key part. You're able to generate that awareness. You are able to reach that customer. And if you look at the definition of content marketing, it's a marketing technique of creating and distributing relevant and valuable content that helps us attract, acquire, and engage a clearly defined and understood audience, target audience with the objective of driving profitable customer action. So you need to know who that audience is, and you need to know what is that customer action that you want them to take. When you think about content, I grabbed this image here from, it's a jewel boxes from a local um, India store, India market. And when you think about content, you think about something like a jewel box. How much time did somebody put into designing these? 
right? There's art and there's science with it. It's the medium. They're, they're expressing how they feel and the colors that they like and how these colors should flow together. Our content should be the same way. Yes, there's a lot of science to it, but we need to find our creative side. The difference between content and content marketing really lies in do you own your destination? We, yes, we can have success building on rented land such as Facebook. However, you need to have a home base. You're doing content marketing at a, with an architecture when you can own the foundation, right? They need to have that foundation they go back to that's yours because Facebook can change overnight. We wake up and everything's changed. So content marketing is about so much more than just the content. You think of this, this man here who's selling lots of different things in his market, how much work it takes. It's not about him just throwing out that content every day. It's how is he presenting it? What is he uh, providing? How is he establishing his business? How is he keeping everything clean? How is he attracting those customers and treating them and creating an amazing experience? We should be thinking about the same things when it comes to our content. So we want to focus on outcomes. It's not what can the technology do for you, but what can you do with the technology? Big difference. It's not how are you going to fit your, fit your business into Facebook, but how can you leverage Facebook to grow your business? We want to try something new, right? We got to get out of our own way. And we need to be ready to work because it's not going to be easy. We need, what does new look like then? New looks like saying yes to things maybe we were afraid of in the past. Saying no to things that we should be saying no to. I already was talking to some people today in an offline conversation here about the importance of saying no to the wrong things so we can say yes to the right things. We should be worrying less, taking risks, and planning more. And sometimes you think those don't go together. She's saying taking risks but planning more. Plan more on the things that we do do. And then we have to be ready to take on that dragon. Like jump on top of the dragon and say, I'm going to go for this. We want to stomp our random acts of marketing, right? It feels good to cross things off of a list. But if it's not funded, if it's not in the plan, if it's not integrated, if you have no metrics for success, then it's a Rammy and it needs to be stomped, right? And it's the, the thing that we see most that where digital marketers, social marketers are losing their jobs because they cannot say no when an executive is asking them to implement a random act of marketing. That's where your plan comes in. So instead, dream big. What conversation online do you want to own? What is the conversation that you become that go-to brand or person that talks about that and helps people? You are the media. I'm the media. If we went away, Facebook would have a hard time making money in the next six months. All right? Marketing is no longer about the stuff that you sell. I want you to think like a media company, not just a marketer or advertiser. It is about the stories that we tell and who we engage in those stories, engaging our customers, engaging our partners. You don't get an audience by doing more social media, by posting more and more. We earn an audience by serving value consistently. When we think like a media, company, not as an advertiser. It is that consistency of value that brings the awareness to our target audience. Because when we have awareness, then people know what we do. And then they're going to do the double click and fill out our contact form. They're going to do the double click and watch our videos and learn more about who we are because we've helped them. Align your social, your digital, and your content to your top business goals? Where can you have the most impact? And the number one question you always want to be asking is why. Why are you creating content? Why should anybody care? So if you have a new blog, why do they care? Because people are tired of losing trust for the companies they want to trust. How many times have you felt like you had your heart broken by a company that lost your trust, that you had a lot of trust for? I think we've all been there. But we're tired of the ads, we're tired of the spam emails, 
that we can't unsubscribe from no matter how many times we click that unsubscribe. That's why people love Facebook Messenger, because they feel like they're in control. They hit unsubscribe and Facebook won't send them any more messages from that business. So we need to focus on earning trust again with our audience. We need to focus on intent. We need to make sure that we know where we are going and why. And that our audience clearly understands that as well. And when we're looking at our key performance indicators, our KPIs, they are helping us measure that transformation. You should not be launching any content marketing campaign or program unless you know what your KPIs are. And you may think, Pam, you're just overcomplicating this. I've had clients tell me this. The number two reasons that I have seen that companies fail when it comes to content marketing is number one, they are impatient and they are unprepared, okay? Having a plan and slowing down to speed up really will get you there faster, I promise, than just publishing a bunch of content. It's quality over quantity. And knowing what your business goals are, what are those objectives, those are what is going to define where you're going, and then the KPIs are going to help you measure that transformation. Do you want improved sales cycles that are shorter? Do you want improved customer satisfaction? Do you want increased brand awareness? Whatever those goals are, you need to make sure that you know what is coming. And then creating a content mission statement. And that statement helps define who you are serving, what you are going to serve them, what is going to be delivered to them, and how are they going to benefit. Okay, you need that. Plan your content. Your content should have a yearly, a quarterly, a monthly, and a weekly goals and themes. We should know what we're talking about. Not waking up on Monday and Wednesday and thinking, what am I gonna post on social media today? What am I gonna post on my blog or my content? When you have a plan, everything flows. You can create one masterpiece of content and then be able to create 50 pieces of content from that. I have content that I created back in 2012. I have a presentation I did at the Rochester Institute of Technology, true story. I had 28 social media myths in that presentation. Can you imagine how many different pieces of content I have created from each one of those myths? There's podcasts, there was Twitter chats at the, when we were doing those, there's blog posts, there's videos on every single one of those myths. So create one piece of content and plan it out. I have a calendar that you can download for free, a template that's broken out by the year. It's at themarketingnutswithaz.com slash calendar. And we update that every year. We've done that since 2010, I think. Every year we provide a brand new calendar and it has every day listed, broke down into an Excel spreadsheet for you. And then last, just make sure that you're embracing other people's content and other people's community. We call it the OPC. You guys know the song, OPC Baby? So uh, it's all about tapping into in an authentic way. Think about the community that you have here, right? You all could be doing content together. Network and find people. This is a powerful community. People that you can interview on one of your content platforms. People that you can do some co-marketing with. There is power in what we call micro-influencer marketing. It doesn't have to be a Kim Kardashian. Right? It can be somebody that even has a smaller network, but those people that are in that community are listening and watching what he or she is saying and doing. So when we talk about influencers, the best way I can explain it to you is that over here on the left, we have your blog, your website, your Facebook news feed, all of those things, and you want to reach your target customer over here, correct? You want everybody to know you've created this amazing content. Your influencers tapping into the power of community is your jet fuel. It is the fuel that is going to get you. Remember when I showed you that horizontal conversion funnel a little bit earlier? This is the jet fuel that gets you to the right side where that ROI is faster than if you do it by yourself. So if there's one thing you walk away from here today with, it's knowing that there is power in community and power in co-marketing when you have a succinct and common target audience that you want to serve. 
You have to make sure those are the right people, but there's power in tapping into the OPC. So you are going to reap what you socially sow. So you want to be thinking about how can you invest now to harvest tomorrow. You can't always just be looking for the quick win. You're looking for, it's, content is a long game, right? It's, it's investing now to reap the benefits later. We're thinking inspiration, ideation. We're thinking how can we build an integrated platform that works even when we're not working, right? Your content can live much longer than what many people will tell you 20 seconds. And uh, it can live years and years if you create amazing content. So thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to talking with many of you. I'm also doing a master class later this afternoon. I wish you the best of success.